just want to make sure my face is on the re-edited version from now on. Yeah. That's my only stipulation. <laughs> We are back. We're back. Look at all these smiling faces. We are back. Uh, don't worry. Liam and Jordan will be along shortly. They're just traveling at the moment. But uh, we said we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put something else in, in the mix. So uh, we do have a... We're going to go through the game. And uh, we're going to have a bit of breaking news as well that has dropped in the last last 20 minutes Ooh. or so. But how is everyone, first of all? Good, Daz. First yeah. of all, actually, Daz, how, how's your little lad? Is he all right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not too, not too bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, he took a bit of a tumble yesterday, crash, and uh, he uh, uh, chipped a bone in his wrist. But uh, oh. he is uh, he's a cast, but he's he's not too bad. He's uh, he's he's still fine. It's, it's slowing him down, but apart from that, he's all good. He's all good. Oh. Well, thanks for asking. Thanks everyone in the chat and on Twitter as well asking as well. Thanks, thanks. That uh, really appreciate it. Um, so um, you know what? Let's let's mention the the, the breaking news first. Uh, it was breaking news. Uh, so well, there we go. So just as as we uh, were about to get ready to jump on there, we found out we have a new CEO, uh, a new CEO. Uh, so in Darren Eels, or as I have called him Eagles, as, the, as I, in my own uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was putting the pictures up, but uh, Darren Eels. Uh, so here he is, and he's coming from. Uh, for, for my quick read of it was he's coming from Atlanta. Uh, uh, where he was based the last number of years, he all, he previously worked with um, uh, Dan Ashworth as well. So there's a good link up there. Uh, he's won a, a few trophies in his time at Atlanta, and I'd like to see that. I would like to see him with the Premier League and the the, the Champions League trophy. That that would do me that that uh, for us. But and also he's he's uh, he's uh, quite friendly with with, with Miggy. So this is the, the, of course of the Atlanta connection, the, the link up with, with Miggy. So. Let's before we get into the game, lads. Uh, what's your thoughts on that breaking news? I'm sure we'll cover it again with with, with uh, Jordan Lee. But uh, your initial thoughts? I I've, I've got to admit. Um, come on, Chris, enough blush away. <laughs> yeah, I know there. No, um, I mean, I must admit, I don't don't know. It was it came as a surprise. We we've we've yeah. noticed, haven't we, that things have changed since Dan Ashworth's come in, and you know a lot of things are getting done behind closed doors, and all of a sudden, bam, things are happening. Um, which is great to see, you know, it's 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 nice uh, to be surprised like this, like none of us were expecting uh, the CEO. And funnily enough, um, it was only a few days ago on the last show that we, you know, the uh, the viewers were asking, oh, any news on the CEO? And I think I think we all resigned ourselves to the fact that, you know, uh, no news is good news. I suppose discussions will be taking place, but um, I was I was really shocked um you know that we that we've brought in a ceo and davin eels i i found the atalanta connection quite funny uh, obviously because of miggy and stuff like that um but yeah i'd 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 be honest as I'll, I'll have to do a little bit of reading into him but the little intro you gave there was really helpful and interesting to see that he's worked with dan ashworth before so i'm yeah. sure there's a little bit of method in the madness um so yeah it's nicely it's, integrating them together isn't it it is this project it is. yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> Richie, Pete, um, I know Richie. You, you would just you kind of just heard as as we're going live. So so and, and look, at, I don't you glance at it because I kind of set up shop here as well. But um, Pete, yeah, you want to say anything about him? Yeah, look, I'll be honest. I don't really know too much about him. But um, the the one thing I'll say um, is, you know, if, if there are links there with, with Dan Ashworth, that that's clearly been in their mindset in in terms of why he's the one that they've chosen um, uh, to fit Dan Ashworth. Uh, whether that whether he's been earmarked for quite a while and they've waited for Dan Ashworth to be confirmed in order to then bring him in because they obviously know each other and interlink quite well. Um, uh, it will be, you know, something that we'll keep an eye on for sure. But, you know, the, the one thing I look at with Atalanta um, or Atlanta, I keep saying Atalanta, it's not Atalanta, it's Atlanta United. Um, the one thing I notice about them is that they are generally a really well-run club. Um, they they are sort of well organized they're, they're well drilled in terms of they know their what, what it is that they want to do in terms of how they want to build and um, they've got a clear link with south america oh, um nice. in terms of how they um in terms of how they um sort of bring their players through so they've got a, a good link to the mls in, in the united states but they've got a good link in america i think he, he he's I, I'm assuming he's been a big part of that, which is why he's obviously got that 
close connection with the likes of Miggy and, and one or two others that have been there. So, look, I'm really intrigued to see how this unfolds. And and actually, uh, a name that's not been out there and, and known to everyone is not necessarily a bad thing. So I think um, I think this could be a really exciting time. And it would definitely take, um, take the pressure off Amanda and Mirdad as being those ones yeah. that are on a day-to-day basis are making those big decisions that are having to make the decisions and run the club um, sort of, you know, for, 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 for the first time and, and not with that level of experience. We've now got experience in the key elements of the club. And this is why I think fans, uh, people in the chat on Loaded have been asking the question, when's the CEO getting done? When's it getting done? And it's the, the reason why is because we need to know what the hierarchy of the club is. We now know what the hierarchy of the club is. So to have that in pre-season, going into the full season, and more importantly, with the best part of seven weeks of the transfer window left, now having the hierarchy set can only be a good thing for Newcastle United. So uh, thumbs up from me. Cool. But well, so there's, there's some interesting things coming through in the chat about him as well. Just uh, Simon's just put in the chat there. He's actually got a degree in economics and passed the bar in 2000 was a solicitor as well. Paul Oxy mentioned he's been brought in for commercial reasons and the American factor. You know, that's another thing we've got to look at as well. He knows the American market and the commercial side over there. So, you know, that's you, you, you're making Newcastle a global brand now. Do you know what I mean? We've already had those connections from doing like the Asia Cup and stuff like that in the Far East. Obviously, we're quite established now in the Middle East because of our owners. We've done pretty you well. Know, we look at the amount of fans on here that are from Australia and New Zealand that watch this podcast. So we already reach over there because we've been on tours over over there before as well. You know, we've done a few tours of America before, but that's probably really a huge untapped market for Newcastle to get themselves. So it's a really astute appointment. The fact that Ashworth's worked with them before really helps as well because that, they know what's expected of each other and they, they've been able to do it before. So that means they can work in tandem again going forward on this big project. But I think, you know, that, that, as Daz mentioned, you know, it caught everybody off guard. Nobody was really expected. There hadn't even been any leaks and everything. And I think that's, to me, that's the most impressive thing going forward. There's nothing really coming out at, from the club at all, which to me, all these people who are stressed about potential incomings on players and stuff, that means, for all we know, there could be two, three or whatever, players just ready, bang, gone, done, that's it. And you'd be like, wow. And I think that's, that's how it used to be when you know, in the days we didn't have social media. Like when we were growing up and then one thing you'll see Kevin Keegan in front of the steps with Andy Cole and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it, you know, it, it, that, that's good. I, I remember the day when Alan Shearer signed and I, I was, unfortunately, I was in the A&E. But it was all over the TV, all over the you know the newspapers, and that's the sort of stuff. That's when sometimes you found out what was going on. Whereas now these little leaks occasionally, yeah, it's all good to know what's potentially going on. But at the same time, there's nothing better than a huge surprise coming down, and you're going, "Wow, that's class, amazing, really look for it." It just lifts the the, the fan base even more. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to those. The fact that it's tight sh- tight shop at the minute. So, I know it probably looks no, it's a good fan with me at Sean and stuff like that. <coughs> You know, it, uh, all these people will be saying he's plugging all these names out of the, of the air, but uh, you know, so, some of the stuff that Sean finds out is very, very good. And uh, you know, we, we've we've proved that the last few days, uh, some of the stuff that he's told us back start of this year or months ago, and you know, they've come true now. So it's yeah, I like it's really, really good. With, and the fact that the club's going this way is really, really good. So there you go, Daz. Cool. cool. You know, and, and it's going two good points there. Just yeah, yeah just just the, the shock and awe factor, and yeah, you mentioned the coal and and it's here coming. The two, they, everyone remembers what, when those happened, when those uh, two events happened. But um, so yeah, and I think he he, he had some he played a, some a role in, in Spurs as well, according to Wikipedia that I've just glanced at there. But let's forget about the CEO. We might we'll come back to it again when we have the lads on. But we we do have one of the lads that has shown up. Uh, so we might as well get it, get him on, and then we'll start into the to the game. So uh, here he is. Here's the main man. The Prentice hasn't joined yet. Here's the main man, Jordan. <laughs> well, Hello, Jordan. Hello, you mate. Guys? How are you doing? Not too bad. All good. All good. Good, mate. All good. Good day out. Yeah, scenic day out. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, That's for really... sure. That's for sure. So the pictures are amazing of uh, the, wow. the 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 actual um, pitch and the the actual location of it, but. Uh, yeah, let's get into the game. So, um, 
the squads were, were announced. I have a few pictures here, but we'll, we'll dovetail between everyone. Uh, squ- squads were announced. We, we, we knew from, the, from this that there was going to be um, two teams, one in the first half and one in the second half. Uh, this is the team that play, took to the, the field for the first half. And thanks, Chris, for the lovely picture as well that you, you managed to, to snap. Uh, so, yeah, that was the, the team for the first half. It's a great thought, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And what I found is that, but off off the common is that the the black and white stripes really stand out in, in these mm. pictures that I that we have now. But anyway, what did you make of the first half, Jordan? The, 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 let's call it the boring half. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mean, first half was um, extremely stop start. I thought uh, eighteen sixty Munich probably looked a little bit sharper. Um, I think they returned to preseason two weeks ahead of Newcastle, so. I probably show for the for the first half. Um, there wasn't really much run through it. A lot didn't happen. Um, referee, I thought, was quite poor as well. Um, turned up for a for a league match when you know it's a it's a preseason friendly. Um, give some really stupid fouls. Booked Jamal Lascelles after 22 minutes, which I just thought was um, bizarre. Um, look, booking. Booking people in friendlies can can be justified at times, but 22 minutes into a game, um, I just I didn't understand that at all. So I thought I thought the referee was a was a big problem in the in the first half, and I I found it quite amusing the fact that Callum Wilson went up to him and, and told the referee to keep his head because uh, so he, he did he did get a bit um, over the top at one point because he just kept giving fouls uh, left, right, and centre. So um, yeah, there was a, it was a real struggle and a real frustration for Newcastle in the in the first half but I think after half time um look we'd grow into it. Obviously uh Seb Botman came on to, to make his make his debut in the in the second half, which is great to see. Obviously Nick Pope made his debut as well. Didn't have much to do but um good to see two new players in black and white shirts. Um and yeah, obviously Newcastle took the lead before they changed the team on the hour mark. It was only Botman who who survived because he came on at half time for Jamal Lascelles who um, picked up a little bit of a knock, but he, sh- he should be should be okay. Um, and then as soon as uh, Bruno came on, look, he was it was a it was an easy after easy afternoon work for him. He assisted one and scored one within 17 minutes of coming on. He's only on the pitch for half an hour, and um, for all the talk of new signings, you can just see how uh, how brilliant he is and what a what a what a star player he is. He was uh, he was levels above anyone on that pitch, and yeah, a, a, a good performance, a, a good workout. But it'll be Monday. Will be Tough are because um look, no disrespect to 1860 Munich, but they are a third tier German side where you know Newcastle go up against go up against uh, Mainz on, on Monday and they finish in the top half of the Bundesliga. So um a, a warm up game it was today, but uh, I think the real test will probably come on come on Monday. Um because Eddie Howe admitted in the build up of the game that a few of the t- the players were fatigued because they'd been working double well, been doing double sessions all week. So um if they do double sessions and, and turn up that fatigued against uh, Mites on Monday, then they, they might be in for a uh, for a shock in that first half. So I'd imagine the training schedule will probably change now that uh, play the game. And as I say, it, it uh, focus does now turn to that that Monday game, and hopefully they're going to end the Austria trip on a high. Nice so Jordan, and a bit of another breaking news there as well. Uh, if I, it's, uh, it's, I won't even want to get it. Your apprentice has arrived, so we better get him on. Here's <laughs> Lynn Kennedy. Is it Christmas Where is already? It? Where's the apprentice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads, he's here. If you can't find him, you're looking. We're looking at him. <laughs> good I'm saying, so all good, all good. This end, I'm sure Jordan's filled you in on all how good, how good uh, a certain Brazilian that we might have signed in January was today. Wow, honestly, if oh, seriously, man. I don't know if you guys watched the game, if you had a chance to catch up, but. Honestly, just some of the things he does with the football, it's like it's like his right foot's just a magic wand. I was talking to Jordan in the car on the way back and forget the goal, the assist, you know, the bits that actually matter. But there was one point where the game stopped um, about 10 minutes after he'd come on and there was a foul and a guy ran over to him as if to come and take the ball off him. And he just flicked it up with his foot and rolled it up his leg and somehow with his sort of shin or knee, flicked it over the bloke's head and walked away. And I'm looking at him going... <laughs> That's humanly possible. Like, the guy's just got it on. He's, he's honestly got it on strings. This ball, like, it's such a such a special player. And anybody out there who may be watching this today who didn't have the opportunity, like we did, very privileged to see the game. Um, if you thought Bruno was good last year, he's already shaping up after half an hour to be even better probably next year. 
Can't wait. Yeah, we, we um, all we are incredibly lucky to have him. Honestly, yeah. like he, uh, uh, we obviously were really excited when he came in, and obviously had a really good end to the season. But you are absolutely right. He he just he's just a class above everybody, and and he is the best player at the football club. It's as simple as that. And I, I think he's he's proved it now for six months, um, and he proved it again today. He was just so good, so good. Levels above, but what I would say is <clears throat> another player who was already at the club. Not obviously we had two debutants today, and we'll probably come on to that. But uh, Sean Longstaff, who came off the bench, like every time Sean Longstaff seems to be given an opportunity of late, I took a bit of criticism I think towards about in last season. I think when he got his deal. The suggestion he's been brilliant since Eddie Howe came in. Maybe I was sort of overstating that a little bit, but I think we're really starting to see the growth of Sean Longstaff over the last few months. Growth in stature, he looks physically um, fitter. Um, he's still got those long legs, rangy figure, but he's bulked out a little bit. Um, he's he just he gets up and down the park. I think he's he's a really really interesting proposition going into this season, because if you're picking a midfield, any given day you might say, well. I, I've said this to Jordan as well. I, I think he probably sh- favours Shelby at times in this midfield with Bruno playing alongside and Joel on the other side. Even if you switch that around, a lot of people might make a case for Joel Willock, who I think has certain skills in this midfield that others don't have in the squad. For me, though, he's probably a last 20 minutes, half an hour player who runs into spaces and causes absolute havoc because of the, the speed he can run and, and sort of travel um, across the pitch. But Sean Longstaff, does a bit of everything. He's got a bit of everything in his game. And, and I think you see him with the goal of the day and some of the link-up play with Bruno. He wins tackles. He's got a little bit of everything. And I, I think it's it's going to be an... In- oh. I thought it was me. It's not me this time. No, I think it's both of them. I think we lost Ooh. both of them. Hotel props. Yeah. No, I think I think Liam's, Liam's moving a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is back? Is that- yeah. One second. Yeah. Oh, oh, we know we've got Jordan. We've got Jordan. We've got Jordan back. It's... Yeah, they're both kind of. It's just kind of rebooting a bit. I'd say the uh, internet in the hotel. <laughs> I was going to say just while we're waiting Jordan's for Liam Jordan to come back, uh, Pete. Do you think that one of the reasons why? Just going on what they say about Sean Longstaff. Do you think it's one of those things where it's we're now seeing the player? That Rafa originally saw when we he started, you know, when he, when he hit the scene and made his debut, and now he's got a manager who's actually backing him up and has belief in him again. We always say confidence is a really important thing for yeah. players, and sometimes they need an arm around them. And it, for me, I think that's probably what we're seeing with Eddie Howe and the relationship he's got with Sean Longstaff. And yeah, he got the extra, you know, the, the extension of his contract, and perhaps that has, as Liam mentioned, that's taken him to it. You know, another level, you know, that extra confidence level that like his manager believes in him and he wants to be part of the, you know, the project going forward, well, especially for being a local lad. Yeah. Look, it, it, Liam, to be fair, Liam was probably one of the only ones that uh, that is backed Sean Longstaff all the way through, certainly the back end of the season. And he's always, he's always had that positivity that Sean Longstaff would come good, even when others thought that actually, uh, and look, I'm, I'm one of them. I think we're all one of them at one point where we thought he was out of the club, he was gone. But Liam's always been the one that's kind of backed him. And actually, you know what? You know what changed my what changed my mind is when I watched him when I was at Turf Moor for the last game of the season. When I watched him and the way he connected with Bruno Gamerez in that midfield, they made that midfield look effortless. The way they moved, his fitness, like getting around the pitch, they were both getting stuck in. They were very similar in their play. And they actually played very much the same way today. And that fills me with confidence. Now, what was interesting is that you um, is that Liam actually talked about John Joe Shelby. And maybe, you know, he's one that, that could start. I don't think he is. I watched him again today. And I, I actually think, and look, I've, I've got an opinion on 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 the first half and the second half. There's lots of there's been lots of talk on social media about that. And I'll talk about the first half, second half, and I'll give you my opinion on how that's gone down it, from, from like um from what I saw. But from a from a John Joe Shelby point of view, I, I actually think that Sean Longstaff is going into this season ahead of John Joe Shelby, or he certainly should be, because I think um, and from what I've seen at the back end of the last season, what I saw again today is that there was more of a connection 
with Sean Longstaff and Bruno Gameris in that midfield. Um, I don't know if you guys remember me saying on the review of, of, of the Burnley game is that that midfield was fluid at Turf Moor. It was a very fluid midfield. They, were, they all know their roles. They all can play in different positions and they can all press forward. They can all sit deep and they just transformed. Like they, they literally just moved as a fluid motion in that midfield. It was a little bit like that today with Sean Longstaff, Bruno Gamerez and Joe Linton. They were very, very fluid in that midfield in the second half. And I really liked the way that worked. And I think that brings the best out of Sean Longstaff. And actually... If, if you can connect with Bruno Gamerez, then you're more likely to start than anything else. And, and so I, I would put him ahead of ahead of John Joe Shelby going in this season. I, I look, I don't know what you guys think about that. I think it's a really, for me, I think it's a really interesting point. And you talk a lot about the fluidity in the midfield and you're absolutely spot on. I think everybody's key to pigeonhole footballers and put them in certain positions. And we all talk about a, a sitter or a defensive midfielder. And I do think... There are certain games where Newcastle could probably do with that bit of protection of the back four. They struggled in certain um, certain games last season, probably well, more against the bigger sides to, to sort of protect that um, back line. I'm thinking back to Man City. I'm thinking back to Tottenham and other games like that. But it doesn't have to be that way in most games where Bruno sits, but he doesn't sit. He, he, he then interchanges and Joe Linton might do a little bit of sitting or Longstaff or whoever else it is. Even at times today when Willock was playing, Willock did a little bit of that. It's, it is quite a fluid midfield and it's quite a progressive, positive midfield where they're all looking for the first op- possible opportunity to get forward and, and overload and get bodies in the box and create goals. And I think that's going to be key for Newcastle this season is there's a lot of uh, idea on we have to sign a 20 goal a season striker or we have to sign, you know, that kind of thing. Someone to rival Callum Wilson when he doesn't play. But for me, it's got to be a case of goals have got to come from all over the pitch and, and they've got to make sure that midfield is chipping in with a fair amount. Bruno's proven and it, it, it kind of goes against the grain, to be honest. He's not been a goal scorer midfielder for his whole career. Um, yeah. He was last season, but we're going to need more of that. We're going to need Sean Longstaff to start scoring the type of goals he's threatened to score. Ever since he's been in under 18s, under 23s, we're going to need him to start chipping in with six, seven goals in a season. We're going to need the same from Shelby did it for for six months at the back end of a season a couple of years ago where he chipped in with four or five. And that's what we need. We need our midfielders getting goals. We can't be over-reliant on, on Callum Wilson producing sort of 15 every season because his body, as we know, his body just doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to be able to take more than 25 games in a season. Chris, we might go to you and, and get your, your thoughts on the game. I know you, you got to see a good bit of the game. I was kind of had it in the background, so I didn't get to see it really, really very closely. But uh, what's, what's your thoughts, Chris? I mean, my, my initial thoughts, obviously, at half time, I was a little bit deflated. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure Jordan and uh, Liam were even worse because, like, it was it was quite a flat performance. Um, albeit, you know, there were some positives to take from it. It was, it, you know, it didn't quite. Uh... <laughs> like that does don't mind me chris work away <laughs> um the, yeah there were some positives to take from the first half and you know i i i i was hoping that when the substitutions were made in the second half that we were going to see good things obviously it was exciting to see sven botman come on and i'm going to touch on a couple of performances um in me somebody but yeah the second half performance was was much improved it was it was great you know to see the players come on as liam and um jordan have already said like i, I cannot believe I cannot believe we've got a player with Bruno Gomez's quality. Like he honestly does. When he when he come on, 60th minute, he was just he was just unbelievable. Like 30 minutes and what was it, an assist and a goal? He just he just bossed it. And I, I, I you know, I'll take people's um, you know, feedback that, you know, perhaps the, the quality of opposition wasn't the best and stuff like that. But he literally was a standout. He was he was absolutely outstanding. And to touch on Sven Botman. Obviously, it's only his, he's made his debut today. It's only it's only one half, but you could see the the difference in quality. Very very comfortable on the ball. And Liam and Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, when Sven Botman came on at half time, he played as the right sided centre back. And then when Dan Byrne came off, Fabian Shaw came on as the right sided centre back, and Sven Botman slotted into the the you know the left side centre back. But equally looked looked comfortable um, in both positions. Really, what what I liked about him. Is when he when he got the ball, um, that his first thought was to look up, kind of get this ball forward. If he can't, pass it on and let you know let the play progress. But his first initial thought was to look up and go, "Who can I give it to?" And that that you know, 
when you've got two ball playing centre halves in Shah and Botman, that can only you know spell good things. Um, Sean Longstaff, I thought, I thought like you know we've already said, I thought Sean Longstaff was was superb. Um, looks really really fit, and I tell you what, that was some finish. Really, really finished that well. Um, <laughs> you could hear the gasps from the crowd because it was, it was, a, it was a really, really good finish. Um, but yeah, lots, lots of positives to take from today's game. I thought uh, Chris Wood did well for the um, for laying on Bruno when you when you watch the replay. You know, he, he cut it back quite nicely. Um, you know, for the big lads, it, it was good, good footwork. Um, but yeah. That's that's for me, you know, from from what I've seen, I, I I I'm pleased with the win. It's another, you know, it's a it's a positive positive uh, scoreline. Um, so we've now got our five one three nil, and you know, I'm looking forward to uh, the next game on Monday. Awesome, Richie. Maybe we've got to you as well. But thoughts on the game? Uh, well, as I said only I got, only got to see the first half really because I had to go and do the school and the shop on the saf- on the afternoon. But um, I think one, the one thing I, I was really interested, in, especially when the team sheet was uh, named, was just to see how Elliot Anderson got on. Uh, and I was actually really pleased with it. I thought I thought he showed a lot of promises, got some good link up play as well. But I think you know sometimes it was the odd little ball which possibly was over hit a little bit. But for me. It was the fact he was trying to make those passes. He was making the runs, trying at the ball back, and that's when you, you know, the more he plays with the people around him, like you know, like ASM and Bruno and uh, Callum Wilson and people like that in that final third, that chemistry will grow a lot quicker. And you know, the fact that he's been in and around them so far, you know, the short period over the uh, last few weeks in pre-season, and to see, he looked that link-up plays looks really good. And it, I know it's probably going to happen where he goes out on load so we can get you know to a championship club or something like that so he gets more game time. But it would be nice to try and keep him around and train with the, the extra quality that we've got uh, probably uh, until late in the window so he gets a bit more type of develop with them and an understanding. And, uh, you know, like, a bit like how it worked with Phil Foden. You know, he, they, they always refused to let him go on loan so he could stay in around the extra quality and work with them on a day-to-day basis. And I think uh, you know the promise that we saw him first half. I think that's something we could, um, you know, work on for the rest of this window. I think we, Newcastle started pretty well first half, but then I think if you looked at after about the first fifteen minutes, they looked a bit, you know, it was a bit stop starty, and you know it, we couldn't get hold of the ball very much, and it, it looked a typical, you know, testimonial preseason friendly type thing, and it was. Um, yeah, I think as Liam mentioned, I think the, the, you could tell they were two weeks ahead of the um, in the preseason schedule, a little bit more fitness, but obviously, which that told in the second half, and they were a bit more tired. Obviously, we were able to bring fresher legs on, and and more obviously quality as well, um, because on paper we had two good start eleven. I know obviously it's probably going to be a mixture of those two 11s when we start, you know, against Forest in three weeks' time, but it's. Um, you know, it's, it's it's good to have people come on like, on the bench as well. So, you know, but you know, preseason friendly. You know, three 0 no injuries, clean sheet. So, what it's about and getting minutes into the belt for the lads. So that's that's the most important thing about it. Right, Richie. Cool. Um, maybe I'll ask you a question about um, the um, the post match and the the, the um, interview with with um, Eddie Howe. Did he did he say anything in particular of of, of note that that? Or did you pick up on anything, anything extra? Yeah, so I, I spoke to Eddie Howe at the end, and um, yeah, it was a pretty, as Eddie Howe tends to do, he doesn't really give too much away. Um, spoke about the first half, and um, as I mentioned previously, about how he'd uh, how he sort of overworked the players this week in terms of double sessions, so blame that sort of blame sort of fatigue on the on the first half. So that was a reason for. For that, um, then went into a bit about um, Seb Botman, who obviously made his debut. Nick Pope, full of praise for for them two players. Um, was asked about Elliot Anderson, which um, thought he's been impressed by him, and I, and I think I think we all have to be honest. Um, I thought in a, in a very grim first half, he was he was the best player on the on the pitch. Uh, constantly wanted the ball, uh, found space centrally in the wide areas. Um, had a, had a go at taking on players, so I, I thought he showed quite a lot of uh, ability. He's still only nineteen, Elliot Anderson. You've got to remember that, and to come back from a successful loan spell and to to you know come into a team that um, also ended the season on a high with some um, good signings in January to to come in and make an impact, it takes a lot, and you know, he's done that. And um, look, I don't think you'll you'll stay within the first team group. I think you'll probably go out and loan to a Championship club again. But um, him impressing now in pre-season is. Uh, 
it's it's encouraging and look you'll only you'll only get better still when you're young lad. So and um, that was another real positive from today. Um and a transfer update as well from Eddie Howe, if you can call it that. Um pretty much said nothing was imminent. Um I seen a comment before in the chat saying that he, someone was a bit disheartened by by Eddie Howe's response on the transfers. Um but Eddie Howe gives as I say gives nothing away. If Newcastle were close to signing a player tomorrow, Eddie Howe would not tell you that. Um <laughs> he, he he doesn't comment on players until until they're signed. So look we as journalists to ask the questions because we want to know, but we, you know, deep down we know the fact that he's not going to give a, a proper answer. Um, but he did, he, he did, he confirmed that um, he, they're in the market for, for for players. Wouldn't wouldn't confirm <clears> which <throat> position, but look, it doesn't take a, a scientist to, to work out who who they need, and that's a that's a wide forward and a, and a striker, hopefully. Um, so they're still in the market. Hopefully, you know, something can be done. But again, just gotta just gotta stay patient on that. Um, and then outgoings as well didn't didn't give anything away. Um, asked about outgoings, and he said, "I think it, well, obviously the, the squad next year is 25, 25 man Premier League squad." Eddie House took thirty players to Austria, um, and he said that he wanted to keep them all. So, um, look, five players have got to be cut from the squad before the season starts. Um, but Eddie Howe again won't comment on players leaving until until it's done and dusted. Um, he's never spoken badly about a player in his time in Newcastle, even you know, leaving likes of Kieran Clark out last year, who's obviously left the club now. Still spoke really highly of him. So um yeah, it was good it was good to speak to him for the first time, obviously since that since that Burnley game. But in terms of, of updates again, keeps his uh, keeps his cards very close to his chest. Mm. Cheers, Jordan. Um any more questions about the game? Because I do want to ask the, the lads about the CEO. Um I just wanted to talk about the the first half, second half, really. Yeah. Um, because it was really interesting for me watching watching the sort of the full ninety two minutes or whatever it was. And there's a, there's been a lot of talk of of the her first half bit being a bit drab. But I think Liam Jordan, you, you would have said the same as well. It was a bit bit of a drab first half. I remember getting to sort of thirty five, thirty six minutes and thinking, wow, is this is this really the first half of this game? And it kind of going through in not really too much happening, but there were there was a there was a bigger perspective that I saw, but there was a few, little few things that I noticed, and one of them you've already touched on. Eddie Anderson was was the standout for me, um, and it wasn't just because of his performance. I actually really enjoyed the way he linked up with ASM. So Eddie Anderson was part of that midfield three on the left hand side, and I loved the connection that he had with ASM. That if ASM went long. Elliot Anderson, Anderson just kind of sat in deep and received the ball, but then they would flip it the other way round. Elliot, Elliot Anderson would make that long darting run and ASM would just sit in. And it wasn't the same over the other side. There wasn't the same connection. And I like the fact that a lad so young has already made a good connection with someone like ASM. And I actually think he played really well. He was unlucky to not get a goal or an assist in the first half. He made some good runs, created some good chances. So did ASM. You know, it was a little bit frustrating in the first 10 minutes, but ASM grew into the game and by the end of the first half was really making some inroads and, and did again in the, at the start of the second half too. Um, and I just thought that connection was really, really good. Um, I actually thought Joe Willick played well as well. Um, I thought he looked good in that midfield. Uh, it, you know, he, he's full of energy, worked hard, um, making those runs to try and get into the box was really, really good to see. And then obviously, I think we've touched on Nick Pope, but Nick Pope, didn't really, you know, you don't expect him to be busy in the games, but the saves that he made were very, very good. Um, and I think it just, if anything, it just solidified his his position as number one goalkeeper. But going to the bigger picture, and I don't know whether any of you guys noticed this as well, but it was a very distinctive first half, second half team. And the way that I saw it is that, you know, particularly in the first half, there was a lot of players that weren't very comfortable on the ball compared to the second half where you had the likes of Bruno Gamares, um, Joe Linton, Longstaff. Um, you had um, you know, Sven Botman, Fabian Shaw. You know, you had Kieran Trippier. You know, that, that's potentially your three out of the four centre, uh, sorry, defensive pairings. And what you notice is they were all very, very comfortable on the ball second half. So we dominated possession. They didn't look like scoring at all in the second half because we dominated possession. We looked really, really solid. But in the first half, we had Dan Byrne 
um, and Jamal Lascelles, who neither of them really looked comfortable on the ball and, it, and at times created opportunities for 1860 Munich. You, you had Paul Dummett that wasn't overly comfortable on the ball. You know, you had, um, sorry, I think it was Matty Target started first goal. Um, but on the right-hand side, um, it, it, Kraft wasn't really comfortable on the ball. You had the midfield of, um, I think, you had, well, um, John Joe Shelby. You had um, Joe Willock. Um, although Joe Willett played well, there was times that he wasn't comfortable on the ball. You had um, Jacob Murphy. There was just players in there that just, it never really flowed very well um, in that first half. And I think that was a real distinctive um, two uh, first 11 squads in that the, the second 11 that, that knew how to control the game, the first half, they didn't. And that was the difference between us getting three goals in the second half and none in the first. And I think that second half team that was out there, I think the majority of that 11 are likely to be starters um, going into next season. And I just, I didn't know what your thoughts were on that. I didn't know whether you'd noticed something, di- uh, something similar. I mean, this, the second half, Pete, you, you're quite right. Like the, I suppose what I wanted to ask you boys as well, just to add on to what you've just said, Pete, like the second half for me felt like the starting 11, bar a couple. I must admit, I was quite surprised Jamal Lewis was left out. Um, but then I, I, re- I heard or read that, um, you know, he was injured because when, when Dummett came on, I, w- I was quite surprised by that. Like I, I, I thought that um, Jamal Lewis would get a run out and then obviously he realised, you know, he was injured and stuff, which mm. is a shame. But yeah, the, the difference, it was it was the ball retention, wasn't it? And it was the fact that, it was the fact that the players looked really comfortable on the ball. And do you know, do you know when you were talking about that, Pete, my, my first thought was then, I wonder if Eddie House thinking, maybe maybe give um, maybe give Elliot Anderson a run out with that second half eleven, because would yeah. would you? I mean, not not say anything badly because you're absolutely right. I thought I thought he did really well, <clears throat> and he actually he he um, he played a cutback pass, didn't he, to Callum Wilson, who really should have done better with that chance yeah. because mm-hmm. it was off target. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't miles off target, yeah. but you know. Um, you can forgive a bit of rustiness and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I I did kind of I always kind of wanted to like jump in the stadium and go yeah put put these players on let's see how they do because it, I mean it's only the second game in the preseason and I'm sure towards the back end of the preseason games we'll start to see what looks more like the start and eleven but yeah the contra- the contrast was big. But it, look, it's um. It, 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 for me, it, it was a big, it was a big standout for me in terms of the quality of football, the quality of footballer. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we we want we want and look, Liam Jordan, get involved in this. We we want players going into next season that are comfortable on the ball. We've already talked about um, Bruno Gomez; that's a given. Joe Linton was comfortable on the ball. Even the likes of Elliot Anderson uh, was comfortable on the ball. There were lots of other players, and uh, particularly that centre back pairing. It'd be interesting to get your opinions on that. With Sven Botman and Fabian Scher, very rarely gave the ball away. What I loved about, and Chris, you touched on this as well, Sven Botman did start on the right and he was comfortable. But as soon as he switched on to the left, and I yeah. told you about that switch ball, that 45 yeah. yard switch ball, he did it within a few minutes of him coming on the pitch and it was just pinpoint. And I bet Kieran Chippier, because he received the ball and played it straight, and I bet he's thinking, I could do with that every game. <laughs> what it does, it just opens up the game. It opens yeah. up the play. You know, you've got centre-backs that we talk about, the likes of Van Dijk and, and top, top players that like to bring the ball into play and really try and um, drive the ball forward and start attacks. He was doing that towards the end of the game when he kind of felt his way into the game. He started doing that and he was bringing the ball in. But Shaw was doing the same. And... You know, Sven Botman was was covering. He was the covering defender at times, but he was allowing Shaw to bring the ball forward. Then when Botman got the set, it was just, it just looked right. It worked. It, it worked. worked it, it? it was it was a fluid <clears throat> defensive unit. And you know, you put Matty Target in that left hand side that likes to bring the ball forward too. You got four ball playing defenders that can really drive us forward. And you know what? In games next season, holding possession. Being comfortable in possession, I just think that's that's a big that's a big big difference. Like, look, what, what I don't know what you guys thought. Look, look, Liam, Jordan, did you see something similar? I think it's going to be a horses for courses, really, for Newcastle that, like, sort of next season. There will be games where you need Dan Byrne, or there will be mm-hmm. games where you need a Jamal ourselves, but 
what they needed to do was they, they were playing against a lower league, op- lower league opposition in Germany. So they essentially were going to have a lot of the ball. And as you make the interesting point there, that there wasn't a lot of players comfortable and you, you put that into the midfield. I want to pick up on the point you said about Elliot Anderson. And one thing that I really noticed today was I'd expected from the bits I've seen of Elliot Anderson in the youth, so I expected him to come in as a forward player um, mm. because he's essentially a number 10. That's where he's played. But he did. He sat. He basically became Joe Linton light today. He got about, he put his tackles in, he closed the gaps. His movement was excellent, to be honest. Not only was he doing that link-up, which I noticed as well, the, the ASM link-up, they were really quite clever with his movements. Sometimes he was a step ahead of St. Maximin and he was wanting the ball and wasn't getting it. Um, but he was also switching across to the right when he could. Um, it did leave them a little bit lacking in certain areas of midfield. I'm not sure how, how you would be able to balance that um, moving forward. But I was really, really pleased with what I saw from Elliot, Elliot Anderson. I think... It'll be interesting to see what they do with him because they're going to have to pitch it right. He's going to have to go to a club where he's going to play. Um, and, and we've talked about it here on this trip. You send him to the championship and if you're going to send him to a team at the top end of the championship, they kind of want players who are ready to deliver uh, promotion. They want people who are going to guarantee to uh, play every single week and make a difference. And is Elliot Anderson of that level? He might be but you're going to need somebody to take a risk on him. So it's going to be a tough sell and where to pitch him is his next move. I personally wouldn't keep him around at Newcastle United because I don't see the I don't see the positivity in keeping him around not playing. He looks to me like a lad who's ready to play. He's just come off the back end of a season where he's played 25 games or whatever it may be for, for um, Bristol Rovers. I think his, his development, even if it's just for the next six months, is best served by going somewhere and playing another 20, 25 games. Um, and really sort of, you know, getting used to the men's game, getting used to week in, week out, taking the knocks, getting yourself fit for a Tuesday, for a Saturday, for a for a Monday, for a Friday, like making sure you every week you can play and be robust enough to, to come back in your castle, even if it's six months, might be a year's time, and be ready to really challenge for that position. Because, look, it, it, it was lower league opposition, but you can tell, you can see the signs you see from players. Like you see, you've seen the signs from Botman. The fact when as soon as he got on the ball, he wanted to spray it left and right. There isn't there isn't anybody in the team. Um, and when Fabian Scher didn't play any Castanets team over the last few years, it was really noticeable that they didn't have that ball playing centre half, somebody who had the ability to spread the play and move things around. So yeah, I think I think Botman was really, really positive. Um I think I think Scher was the difference. Um, I didn't necessarily, I didn't notice Botman being uncomfortable on the right, which some people seem to suggest on social media. I thought he looked fine there. I thought he looked equally the same and on the left, but the difference was the player who was with him. I thought Dan Byrne, for all his qualities, I love Dan Byrne. I think he's been fantastic for us. He had a poor game today. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. I, I thought he was really shaky. I thought even in that 15 minutes where they played together, he sold him a hospital pass for one little short header that he tried to flick back to him. And it was Botman's first touch. And you're like, you wouldn't thank him for that. It was just one of those days for Dan Byrne. And, and I think you can take it one or two ways. You can either take it from the idea that maybe that's why you need to upgrade. But also, you could also just write it off as, look, the lad just had a bit of an off day. It's pre-season. It doesn't really matter. Um I tend to believe in the first one. I think all good teams, when you're fighting out the top end of the table, have depth. So you have two good players. I was talking about this again with Jordan the other day, that everyone's going on and on about this two goalkeeper's idea, who's going to be the number one. Most teams in the top half of the Premier League have two Premier League number one goalkeepers. Look at West Ham. They've just went and signed Ariola again, who's a number one goalkeeper in the Premier League. There's no doubt about it. But they've got Fabianski. That's two number one goalkeepers. That's what we're fighting it out with now. We're in that bracket of, of West Ham fighting six, seven, eight. I think that's where Newcastle has to be um, next season. So I'm not too worried about this strengthening depth. And, and I was quite, I took it quite positive what Eddie Howe was saying. Oh, uh, Liam is just frozen again. And Jordan is frozen again. Oh, no. Chris, 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 Chris is back. amusing. Liam's back. <laughs> I'm back. I said it's I'm funny back. the way they both go I'm at the back. same time. You're back. You're back. Can, You're we live. Can hear you. We can hear you, Liam. We can hear you. Liam, I just want to ask you this also, quick. I think I think it's good that they're going for strength and depth, and I thought it was really positive when Eddie Howe talked about that, about the fact he was going to... Oh, the lads are both... Oh, no, Liam's back. He's back. It's, it's, it's the hotel <laughs> wife. We'll take Jordan off as well for a second. Um, Jordan has not gone to sleep there, by the way. Yeah. Um, oh, no, hang on. 
he's, he's awake. He's awake. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> this Austrian Wi-Fi is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. You're on mute, Jordan. You're on mute. That's, uh, there you go. It's probably because there's two of them connected at once. That's why, Pete. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Jordan, yeah. by the way, is that one of your new t-shirts? Yes, it is, yes. <laughs> you know this, this, this is the one I was worried about. <laughs> nice, mate. Nice. Here they are. They're back. They're back. Okay, well, honestly, you th- we thought this was going to be smooth just coming on. Yeah, no problems. We'll be cutting it out left, right, left, right and centre. Austrian Wi-Fi, who, who would have it? At least, I, I wanted to ask you, is, is Horses for Courses a new one, a new one of your collection? Or, just, or do you have that in the bag for a long time? Yeah, we can, we can, we can save that one. We can save that one in, the, in the, the list of Kennedy cliches. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, you had a question. Yeah, it was, just, it was just following on from what Liam mentioned about Elliot Anderson. Obviously, I'd, I'd said to him about possibly keeping around for the majority of the, the tra- where the transfer window's up just to stay around the extra quality of and send them on loan. But it was also the fact that... Uh, one of the, the questions that I've starred for Lee, I just thought was quite relevant now, was, uh, if I can find out where it's gone, it was from Steve Anderson. It's been basically suggesting a bit like what Chelsea used to do, where they've got that partnership with VC Arnhem and over in, uh, in Belgium and Holland and stuff in France. Would it be worthwhile sending them to somewhere like that? Like, a bit like what Mason Mount did when he went across. Uh, would it be per- worthwhile going to a league like that? Or do you think the Championship League is what he, is required? Um, I think I think I, oh, sorry, go on, John. Uh, you'll you'll speak more sense than me, Lane. Usually do. Go on, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put yourself in Jordan. I give you a job, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um personally, I, I think it sounds like quite a good idea. Um going somewhere where you will get that sort of time on the ball, pitch him at a good side, a good level. Um I think things like that, experiences as well for young players can only be a good thing. Experiences for any young person in whatever job that you're doing, take yourself out of your comfort zone, go and play somewhere else. I think it's a really, really positive thing. And I can imagine there's a little bit of the thinking in that, in the way that Chelsea used to do things, whether they continue to do that, I'm not so sure. Um, but I think there was a bit of that as well, that taking some of these players out of the comfort zone, who they've effectively been... Molly Collin from about the age of eight or nine, where they've just been in an academy system, constantly moving up through the age levels, uh, being the best at their age levels, some of these lads, which Ellie and Anderson obviously has. And they've never really stepped out of the northeast, never stepped away from their family home. It's a really good thing to just send them away for six months a year and, and throw them into a different culture altogether, whether that be going to the Netherlands or whether that could be, like you say, Belgium or France. I think it could only be a positive thing. But as we know, at present, Newcastle don't have any kind of direct link up to, to do things like that. I'm sure if that's something that Dan Ashworth wants to progress, they will do that. I know this time of Brighton, he had a lot of links to the to, to Belgium and, and the club there through through the ownership, etc. And who knows? It could be something with Saint Newcastle. And if that is the case, I would be all for it because I think taking any young player out of their own comfort zone, even if it's just for three months, six months, a month even, is a really positive move. Cool. Um, lads, I'm going to go to the, the question about the CEO. So there about two weeks ago, I think, Jordan, we were talking about um, any news in the CEO and we were saying uh, that, that it's probably going to be uh, Dan Ashworth filling in the role until someone comes on board at a later date. Did the news today, about half, 20 minutes, half an hour before the show started, uh, we, we touched it at the start, start, but did the news today, the, the breaking news, of uh, Darren Neal's coming in as as uh, CEO for New, for Newcastle uh, come as a surprise to you guys or when when did you hear the latest? Yeah, so it was a bit of a surprise to be honest, um, because it sounded like Dan Ashworth was going to be the so the, the the only boardroom appointment at this present moment. Um, we, were, we were told, and I mentioned on the show a few weeks back, um, that it was going to be Dan Ashworth and then someone else, um, but then it did did go quiet on that front. But obviously. Newcastle have uh, recruited Earls and um, lucky Eliza arrives with a lot of lot of pedigree. Um, I'd imagine his role will probably be more the commercial side of the club and growing the club off the pitch in terms of what he's done with uh, Atlanta. Obviously, the, the MLS, um, how how that league's been built up and how teams in that league have been built up over the last um, however many years. Um, I'd imagine he'll probably want to come in and try and grow Newcastle commercially and to maybe even globally as well. Um, because look, Newcastle do have a a global presence because they're 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 a big club, but 
Um, there can obviously be better areas because it's a club that hasn't been um, touching that area for, for, for 14 years, basically, since, since, Mike, since Mike Ashley arrived. So he's got a big job to do. Um, but I think it's, it's a really, really good appointment, as I say. Um, Rise a lot of a lot of pedigree. Was um, has worked with Dan Ashraf before, so it's it's good to have that to have that previous relationship. Um, clearly, it's probably an appointment that Dan Dan Ashraf probably pushed for. Um, so for me, that that's a that's a big positive. Um, employing good people in high positions at the football club can only mean positive things for the future. Um, a lot of growth is needed off the pitch, and um, with Dan Ashworth and now and now Darren Earls as well, it's um, it's really really positive. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Um, but when I heard about the news, yeah, it was a surprise because I was currently uh, I was eating me uh, chicken royale from Burger King at the time. So, um, oh, <laughs> you absolute legend! That is the one burger I go for, the chicken royale. There is no, no other. Not, not having this. No, there is no <laughs> other. Don't go for it, King. No one, no, don't promote. Oh, don't, don't do that. Oh, people, think I, people will think I've lagged out again. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah I was thinking that. <laughs> Jordan, you're already the main man, but you put yourself to legend status. Chicken <laughs> Royale, Burger King. You know it makes sense. Brilliant. Love it. Uh, f- favorite, uh, this sounds like another show. Favorite takeaway, Liam, or anything else you want to say about uh, our new CEO? <laughs> So, so I was eating. I was eating a big king at the time. I don't know what I, what I was thinking. Oh, I do normally go for a royal as well, but no, I, I, you know, I'm, I've been relegated in in uh, Pete's eyes there. I can see it already in his face. Um, <laughs> I don't say on the eels, the eels situation. If you just got looked at the statement that Newcastle United have put out, it was my understanding always that the chief executive would come into the football club. Um, but we didn't really have a time scale on it. That was probably one of the issues. We weren't really sure when it would happen. Originally, suggestions were made to me that it would be a chief exec before um, Dan Ashworth and, and they would be connected. It just so happens it's been the other way around and there is obviously a clear connection there from the West Brom days. Um, but go back to the statement and the statement's quite interesting. And it, it's, it's an antithesis of what the club was under Mike Ashley. So it describes his... Uh, achievements basically he built the franchise as everyone probably knows you've probably done your own reading on this built the franchise in Atlanta effectively um, but built secured the highest average attendance in the MLS created the most valuable squad and generated the largest profits won multiple trophies does that not say something to you does that not say something of what they're trying to build here at Newcastle United that underlines exactly what they want they want progress they want success they want winners they want people who are going to achieve we're not just stuck here with with pen pushers who get promoted and promoted and promoted again to the point just because they're the lowest paid chief executive or football executive in the Premier League that, yeah. that we're happy with that. We, we, we had that for too long. This is all about progress. It's all about progress. Um, and I think it can only be a positive thing. It also allows um, me, dad and Amanda to take a little step back as well because they've been they've effectively been interim in that position. Um, and that frees them up to to almost be the people they wanted to be when they bought this football club, which is the owners. They don't want to have to be negotiating transfers. Dan Ashworth does that now. They don't want to have to be at the very forefront of the nitty gritty of the commercial stuff as mentioned. They don't have to do all of that now. They can just be the owners that they really wanted to be, um, the custodians that they've already proven to me in eight months, nine months that they that they will be for uh, the long term. And I think, like I said, bringing someone in of, of the ilk of Darren Eels, he might not be a regular name to everybody. Um, he was only really a regular name to me, not from his time at West Brom, but mainly because of this Almiron, of all the Almiron deal, etc. His name was mentioned every every couple of weeks yeah. when we were linked with him. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think it's a really, really positive step. And, and just represents, like I said, going back to those those statements, generating the largest profits. That's what this. That's what PIF want to do, effectively, at Newcastle United. And creating the most valuable squad. They want to build this football club. They want to build the value of the football club. And I think the appointment of Darren Eels is, is a step in the right direction. Nice one, Liam. Thanks as well, Jordan. Um, Chris, we go to... Or is it Richie? We go to, to questions? Yeah, I just wanted just to follow up on it was what Liam's has touched on with uh, Darren Eels there. Because Chris Foster put an interesting point before he says about... Uh, us hiring an MLS sport and chief saying of that have they actually lost the plot? Uh, obviously we want to be a top side and obviously MLS Atlanta on a top side. I think you've just pretty much 
reiterated a lot of stuff he actually did at Atlanta United there when you when you answer that. But something that we also touched on as well, or we were discussing it before you joined us, was um, the commercial side of things as well. We're not, you know, the, the US is a huge commercial market, which he'll know the inside out of, which we don't particularly have a huge, you know, footing at the moment compared to your Man United's Liverpool's, Arsenal's, and Man City's and stuff. So we will say there could be something developed on there as well. Um, but obviously, he's, he's, he also then commented saying that. It smells that our consortium have got no knowledge of football uh, with this appointment. So I think that's just a, a bit of a silly comment myself. I don't know what you guys think on that. It's been it's something opinion. leveled. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, I guess. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah. It, yeah, they are. They are. It's been something leveled at uh, the likes of Amanda and Mia from day one since they walked through the door. We had we had people all over talk sport, you know, talking about these people don't know football, they'll make mistakes. We've had every pundit under the sun come to criticise. And where are we? We're, we're 10 months or whatever it may be, I, I lose count, down the line. And is it have, have they really made any big errors? I mean, you can criticise certain things. Yes, season ticket holders probably should have got priority on certain ticket releases. Um, you know, have they, have they done the right thing with regards not releasing enough season tickets? You know, could they have done a little bit more here, a little bit more there? Could they have spent more money? Have they, did they get sponsorship in quick enough? Have they maybe done the right thing with the funny eight? There's little minor things, but really, let's be let's let's put it into perspective, man. It's got to be put into perspective. They've signed virtually all the right players. You'd probably say out oh, the players have signed one, maybe one would probably be question, questionable whether it's probably been the right decision, um, and that had its purpose in its own right. Beyond that, you would say. They've developed, they've put plans in place to develop a training ground in the short term and the long term. They've put plans in place to develop the stadium. You see, the rail seating idea is within, with the mindset of then bringing that to the home support as well, but they don't want to upset too much at this current time with the season ticket situation. I think they want to get all that in order, really, because there's so many people on so many different deals in Newcastle United. I don't think anybody knows what ticket they've got at the moment. Um, so I think that's probably a little bit of the thinking behind that. Um, but have they made any mistakes? Did they make a mistake in appointing Eddie Howe? I mean, that was the first major decision that they made. And, and it's it's looking like a pretty good one to me. I mean, you, you can't judge on 10 months, eight, nine months, whatever he's been. But I think we'll be able to judge at the end of next season. But all the signs are good. He seems like a good, solid professional um, with a good work ethic, good attitude. And that's what this club needed after what it had before. It had been left to rot. And poor people have been put in places of responsibility in the football club. I get the sense that there's good, positive, um, really good standard of people with a good work ethic in, in, in all the key positions now. And and that can only, it doesn't mean it's going to work. It doesn't mean we'll get everything right. It doesn't mean we'll get to where we want to be quicker than where we want to get there. But, you know, we're, we're heading in the right direction. And I think that's the perspective that when you look at it and say, I'm going to criticise this minor decision, is your football club in a better place than it was ten months ago? And, and there's only one answer to that. The, the one, the one thing I'll just add to that, Liam, is that, that I think with with, with 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 our fan base, certainly since the takeover has um, happened, and and only a small section of the fan base is that we expect to get the best that's out there, or or the biggest name. The biggest name isn't necessarily always the best fit. For the football club, so if we'd have gone the biggest name, we'd have, we'd have got Louis Louis Campos, who, who's gone to PSG, or we've got Emilalo, who who was close to signing as apparently, if reports have been uh, all considered, and they would have apparently been the biggest name or the better name for the club. But actually, we've got Dan Ashworth, who's the best fit for Newcastle United right now in terms of where we want to go. Now, you know, Darren Eels is, is, isn't the biggest name or the biggest one out there, which is why I think um, Chris F has, has put those comments out there. But but who's to say that, that he's not going to be the best fit like you've just talked about in terms of how Newcastle United move forward? And he could well be be or become a huge name in football because of what he does at Newcastle United. Uh, and, and that's sometimes what we, I think, forget. And sometimes what we did in our in our biggest moments back in with uh, Kevin Keegan and, and Sabo Robson is we went out there and got the biggest and best name that wasn't actually necessarily the best fit for the club. And that's what we need to get right this time. 
Uh, and so I would just kind of add that to what you've said, because I think that's a really important point. And I think sometimes we need to f remember that it's actually about what, what pieces the puzzle together rather than what's out there in terms of the best star name um, at, at the club. Um, yeah. So look, I, I know we're, we're, we're short on time. Are, are you able to, to answer? I've got, yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a couple, I've got a question Actually. for each of them before we let them go, if that's all right, Liam and John. Yeah, no bother. Right, so I just want to uh, touch on this one briefly from Seth Mag. Anyone happens to know much that uh, about the uh, Aston Martin deal with PIF and saying Devante a sixty-five million sponsorship would be good on that one. <laughs> Carl, that's something that you know what I mean. I, I, I'll I'll take a sponsorship deal with anybody. Me, you can you can buy me. No problem. So will we. <laughs> so will we. We're looking to give away a car, actually. I think <laughs> me too. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, I'll ask you this one, and then there's one more for uh, Liam. So this is from Michael Pomar. Another game that has me questioning if, if ESM can really fit in a how team. What would you, your answer be to that? Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of mixed um, responses to Alan St. Maxon's performance today. I thought, he, I thought he'd done okay. Um, look, he, he had a chance, uh, a couple of runs in the in the first half. Um, so I was, he got the ball. Um, but it didn't really take on his mind a lot. I, I, I don't know if he looks like he's a player that's lacking confidence or um, a player that's lacking half a yard at the moment. Um, it's hard. It's hard to judge where Alan St. Maxim is at against um, against sort of third tier opposition or any opposition in pre season. To be honest, um, judge him at the end of pre season. He, he's, he's got to have a big pre season, if I'm honest, because in terms of building up his fitness, because. Last season, um, when he got injured in the March and he um, and he picked up illness, he missed four games, I think it was, or uh, four games out of six or whatever it was, and never really returned as the as the same player. Um, and obviously that led to speculation about his future. Um, a lot of fans, in a way, writing him off. Um, but I'm not at that stage at all. I think this is a is a big season for him. And if Alan St. Maxim doesn't deliver this season. Um, then look, maybe we can have this conversation next year about cashing in. But um, look, he's, he's I'm really reluctant to criticize the player. I, I recognize that he's probably a player out of out of form and not at his best. Um, but just think back to when to when he was uh, under Steve Bruce and the you know, he was often the, the sort of the shining light under a very dark era. Um, so just give it, give him time. Look, if, if he's still performing badly in the, in, in the Premier League season, then. We can have we can have this discussion, but on a, on a preseason friendly, um, no, it's not for me. Just just give the give the lad time. He, he deserves time. He's he's earned he's earned fans' patience and he's earned the right, you know, for fans to to just um, stick with him. Really, um, so that, that's my response to that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and this one from Yano for Liam, and then obviously we'll let you get off because he's had a long day. He's they basically he's just said that with Shaw and Botman uh, playing well together in the setting off. Do you think it makes the John Joe Shelby role redundant because of the distribution that the two of those have? Um, possibly, possibly it does. It does diminish his role in the team a bit. Um, if you've got central defenders who can do a lot of the passing, but I think John Joe Shelby can offer a little bit more than that, um, and I think he probably has to offer a little bit more than that now. I think we're going to really have to see the complete John Joe Shelby. And he looks in good shape. He made some good passes today. We'll forget the little. Short court, well, the corner thing where he somehow skewed a shot sort of 10 yards wide. Um, but I think he was all right today, John Joe Shelby. And I think he has got a part in the plans uh, this season. So um, he'll be needed. That the, If they're going to have the type of season that they, they hope to have, they're going to need every, every single player in the 25 man squad and probably a few more as well um, in and around that. If that's Elliot Anderson, if it's others, they're, they're going to need they're going to need to go deep with our squad this season um, because. They want to progress and they want to have cup competitions. Eddie Howe said himself to us, he wants to have a cup run this season. So, fingers crossed they can. And, and if they're going to do that, they'll need players like John Joe Shelby to perform. No bother. Pete? No, it's a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Jordan and Liam. Look, I know you've had a really busy day with, uh, obviously, with the game, with the press conferences afterwards, with, uh, obviously, um, Eddie Howe. And then the travel back um, in order to join us. So we really, really appreciate your time. We're gonna, we're going to let you go and be able to enjoy your Friday evening. Just, just one thing, Pete. You're an hour ahead. One thing, 
I just want to say, sorry, Peter, interrupting. It's just uh, for anyone that d- d- doesn't recognize Jordan Ali, you can catch them on uh, Newcastle World. So just, just lads, if you want to plug Newcastle World. No, Liam. I think Liam. I think Liam was frozen. Liam's, Liam's frozen. Do the I think Liam wants you. I think Liam wants you to earn your money here, John. He's about to walk faster than him. He's behind us. There he is. There. Yeah, hey. Tell us all, about, lads. Tell us all about Newcastle World. <laughs> yeah, so so I'll plug Newcastle World. So obviously, mainly I'm out here in in Austria. Um, it's a it's a project that's been going. Um, probably about a year now actually and uh, it's been growth on growth every month in terms of our uh, figures and it's been a really positive experience and, and being here in Austria is obviously a massive privilege and um, look just please tune in please tune in in your Castle World this year we're, we're both here uh, working a lot of hours to, to provide content on, on Newcastle um, as we'll have the day there's, there's plenty on the website from the game uh, match report ratings uh, Eddie um, interview Eddie how there'll be analysis pieces tomorrow so look, there's loads to get your teeth into um, so please do please do tune in because look, we're really appreciating and, and the support of people tuning in the website ultimately keeps uh, me and Liam in a, in a job as well <laughs> holidays holidays more holidays for the boys <laughs> <laughs> no it's quite quality I, I, I also read that, that Newcastle World articles uh, best place to get your information uh, anyone that, that, that hasn't uh, come across them yet but uh, thanks to, to Liam and thanks to, to Jordan, as, as Pete was saying as well, to, for, for joining us. And lads, we'll we let you get on with the weekend and the, the busy few days ahead. Yeah, cheers, cheers for having us, lads. Uh, sorry about the connection of points, but um, look, Austrian Wi-Fi, that's what I blame it on. Take care, mate. Cheers, lads. Take care, Jordan. Cheers, Jordan. Thanks, mate. Peace, Jordan. Bye, Liam. Bye, Liam. That was the boys. Great to have them on. Yeah, and together Very as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, it's it's not easy, you know. Uh, obviously, finding times for them to, to to come on, but the fact that they wanted to come on and join is at Loaded Mag NUFC to talk uh, sort of a, a review of the game it, it means a lot to us. But it just shows that their commitment to to Newcastle and and obviously Loaded Mag NUFC. So, pleasure to have them on. I'm sure they'll be back on as the season progresses. Uh, Jordan certainly will for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah. All good, all good from our point of view. Nice one. Um, you know, what? I'm going to go to to sponsors first because I, I I for, I've, I've forgotten this about two weeks in a row. So I want to give, and I promise John Justice Allen that I give a shout out to P- Peter Beardsley Soccer School. So if uh, it, it, I'm sure people have seen it on, on Twitter already, I think it's where, where businesses can can sponsor a, a place for someone, and they then they get a shout out for their business. So uh, contact John Justice Allen or. or find uh, Peter Bursey Soccer School on, on Twitter and uh, check that out. Um, yeah, and also then just a shout out to our sponsors, shout out to Chai Barnes, Barnes, Barnes.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, people love the way I say it. Uh, but yeah, Simon, who's in the chat, as always, and uh, the range that there's available on um, uh, Pete, this is where you get the t-shirt um, on, on Simon's uh, uh, site and also available is the uh, loaded t-shirt and, and also the loaded uh, cup and water bottle as well and here is my picture of where is my model? Oh, here's our model oh, we have two models we've got Pete modelling and Adam modelling at the same time I like it, I like it so uh, and of course Mick uh, has been modeling the, the the cup as has Ray. So get your pictures. Anyone that's bought bought them, yes, uh, get the pictures because we we love we love to actually see who we're interacting with uh, each 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 uh, week as well. So lovely Pete, great job, very professional. You did a bit of DX there, uh, Pete. It was, it was DX, yes, yes, Richie. I'm glad someone the noticed wrestling thing. <laughs> the old yeah, the DX <laughs> shot. It's funny because I, that's funny because you mentioned that. Pete. I actually saw a clip this morning on Twitter for regards DX from ninety. Sorry about, oh, I don't know about twenty year ago. And I thought I thought of you straight away. I thought about <laughs> twenty years, but I knew you'd be at work, so I left it because it was quite a, a rude one. <laughs> yeah, hey, right. I'm not at work. I'm on some holiday, so I'm good. But like, yeah. Um, Oh uh, yeah, I, I didn't think anyone would have noticed that the old DX chop, but yeah, yeah, actually, there you're right. Top man, <laughs> top man. 
Shout out to Pins and Prints as well and the range that Dean has available. Go check that out uh, as well online. Uh, shout out as well to Retro NUFC. And he's got a lot of new, uh, I think we mentioned it, you, you guys mentioned it last night, uh, new, new, new stock in there. And as Richie has said as well, the market is in Tynemouth. Tynemouth Metro Station, yeah, on the Saturday of the uh, Bill Bow game. So get yourself along there in the morning. Treat yourself to a new retro top before you get along to St. James in the afternoon. Nice and Richie. There's no eating on this show. Remember that. <laughs> um, also, hey, we're, we're, not turning, we're not turning into that meals business where we're putting meals on... on, on what are you saying, Burger King? Sending them in. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't putting a picture on it. I was in agreeing that that food was good. <laughs> I'm not putting a picture on the screen and saying it's good food, bad food. Ain't it that shit? We're talking about hot water. This is an apple. This is an apple. If, if it's good enough for Bruno, J7, and Miggy, and Shola. Hang on. Where's Shola? Here he is. Another video of pictures, Chris. It's good enough for me. Um, yeah, so... Also, <sighs> shout out to Marty and Machine House and the range available from Machine House. And you see T-shirts, hoodies... T-shirts, hoodies, more T-shirts. Uh, and yeah, so go, go check out uh, what, what he's got available there. And also sign up for the mailing list and you get the, the 10% off. And there's also new uh, stock coming as well. New range coming in uh, August, I think. Um, that's it from the sponsors. We, we do have shows coming up. If, if, if you like a rude show, speaking of rude, uh, we have... Where are they? There they are. The, the, the Jordy, the Good for the Gurus. So uh, looking forward to that on Sunday night. Uh, is it seven or eight, Richie? Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah, so, so we're not so clashing with Paul at Toon Review at eight. Nice one. Actually, that's a good point. Shout out to, to Paul on Toon Review as well. Uh, go go uh, check out the, their shows that they, they have on they had on today, uh, uh, Match Review. And they also, I think they're having a show and probably just started there as well. So go, go check that out. Uh, and give them a sub as well, and also like like this this show and subscribe if you haven't subscribed as well. Uh, we always forget to mention that. And yeah, we'll we'll tell you about that. Anthony else is coming up uh, on on Sunday show. Well, uh, Anthony else, you want to say lads before we wrap up for the night? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Nathan Page for becoming a member of the channel. Much appreciated, Nathan. And um, also Nathan. to Dark by Design as well, who's become a YouTube member as well. And to my good friend, uh, Chris Shields, who's also become a member. Now, the reason why I left him the last is because we did actually mention uh, briefly, I think it was the, I think I was actually off, I think it was a Monday night, but Dan or Daz mentioned it. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you a bit more about this in a few weeks, but uh, as you know, we, we become a sponsor of a local grassroots football team, and Chris is actually part of that team, um, and he was the one who brought the opportunity to us, so... Uh, it's nice to have Chris aboard as a member and also a part of the channel that regards the uh, you know the sponsor going forward. So we're going to be on that journey with Constant AFC uh, under 23s for the next two years at least. So we'll, as I said, we'll bring Chris on in a few weeks' time when the season's a bit closer to getting started off, and uh, we'll go into a bit a bit more in depth about it then as well. Hi, nice Richie. Anything else from anyone else? No, we've got close to 200, if not 200, in the chat right now. Um, but we've only got about 98 thumbs up. So oh. let, let's get that to 200. Put your thumbs up before you before you leave the, the, the show and move on to Toon Review. Just click that thumbs up. It makes a massive difference to us. Just do that on your way out. But um, thank you for tuning in. Really, really appreciate your, your support to Loaded Mag and UFC. Right, I think we'll leave it there, lads. See everyone back on Sunday. Uh, I guess I'll finish my apple. Night, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Night. Bye.